Uh, Assalamu alaikum dear student, uh, I'm Dr. Parvez Ahmad. Uh, welcome to Introductions to Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. Uh, and today's topic we will discuss trends and technologies uh, in energy. Uh, so let us come to our future uses of nanotechnology. So future uses of nanotechnology include uh, that is we can utilize uh, nanoscale uh, we, we can utilize nanotechnology and building nanoscale microchips. Uh, those uh, nanoscale microchips and wires uh, can be utilized uh, in smaller scales electronic uh, devices. Uh, I mean just like we have. Uh, we have the music players, uh, we have so many uh, modern uh, technologies uh, just like the one you can see it here in the figures. Uh, it's basically the main product of the nanotechnology. We can have nano solar cells uh, to, tap, to trap solar energy by making uh, photosynthesis cancer. So this we can do with the uh, nanoscience and nanotechnology. Other future uses of nanotechnology includes uh, that is we can have nano-sized containers to store hydrogens uh, being used as a fuel. You know that we, we normally utilize hydrogen as a fuel. So for that, uh, we can design or we can have nano-sized container uh, to store uh, the hydrogens. Similarly, we can have paint and glues containing nanoparticles, uh, which will be lighter, stronger, and needless uh, solid and need less solvent. Uh, in addition, we can have composite materials uh, made from the nanostructures uh, which are stronger or uh, which we say that can be harder and lighter as compared to the already available uh, uh, materials or we can say the bulk matter materials. So uh, we can say that uh, nanotech revolutions and the field of energy. Uh, when we have discussed LD uh, in our lectures, so nanotechnology has done many more things uh, as compared to the bulk materials. So like any other fields, uh, nanotechnology has also uh, some remarkable revolution in the field of energies. What are they? So let's talk about that. Uh, for example, we have porto, uh, photovoltaics uh, whose drop, uh, I mean whose cost has been dropped by 104. I mean, uh, we, we already have, before the arrival of nanotechnology, we have portable tag, but the prices were uh, very high. I mean, we can say that they were very much, uh, uh, I mean, expensive. So by the introductions or by, uh, by the arrival of the nanotechnology, the cost of portable tags dropped by 104. Similarly, um, uh, we have a portable uh, photocatalytic reductions are CO2 to methanols. I mean, it's become possible by the use of uh, nanotechnology. In addition, we have direct conversions of light, uh, that is, uh, uh, water to, uh, we have direct conversion of light plus water to produce hydrogens. I mean, that is, we can do with, uh, with the help of nanotechnology. Uh, similarly, we can have fuel cells uh, whose uh, price has been dropped. Uh, by uh, uh, 10 to 104 plus we say that uh, it's a low temperature start. I mean so the, the fuel cells uh, not only the, we say that the, the cost has been dropped from 100 to uh, from 10 to 100 time but in addition it can also cost us uh, I mean it can start working with the uh, low temperature I mean we can have low temperature start. Uh, we can have batteries and supercapacitors by the utilization of nanotechnology uh, which can uh, have uh, uh, improve the performance uh, or which we say that can improve uh, the automobile and distribution generation applications uh, by 10 to 104. I mean uh, the batteries the, uh, the battery are the supercapacitors uh, which are being built on uh, the nanomaterials or uh, by the concept of the nanomaterials can uh, distribute uh, the generation application of the automobiles. Uh, I mean we can improve that by 100 to uh, sorry by 10 to 100 times by 100 force. Uh, 
Uh, another thing is uh, hydrogen storage. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, we can have or we can utilize the nanomaterials for the hydrogen uh, storage application. Uh, the application uh, using the nanomaterial is that we should have a device. It should be light uh, materials for pressure tanks and uh, LS2 uh, vessels and our new light a lightweight, easily reversible hydrogen uh, uh, chemisorption system. Uh, in addition, uh, we will have our cables, uh, that is uh, uh, superconductors and quadrant conductors uh, with which to uh, rewrite the electrical transmission grid and enable uh, continentals and even worldwide electrical energy transfer. And also to replace the aluminum and copper wire essentially everywhere, particularly in uh, wearing some of the electric motors and generator, uh, especially good if we can eliminate any current losses. So that's we can do uh, for the power sectors, for power the energy, uh, energy se sector by utilizing the concept from nanoscience and nanotechnology. So energy nanotech grant challenges. Uh, uh, we can have nano electronics to revolutionize computer sensor and devices. I mean, some of the energy, some of the utilization of the nanotechnology is that uh, we can have nano electronics. Uh, that nano, nano electronics can be used, and uh, they were, were being in use from uh, decades. Uh, and their the work is that they have revolutionized, and they will further revolutionize the computers, uh, sensor, and devices. I mean, they have done the thing in the past, in the near past, and they will do it again and again uh, in the future with further improvement. Uh, that is, uh, we will have nano-electronic based uh, robotics with artificial intelligence to enable construction, construction maintenance of the solar uh, structure in space and on the moon. I mean, we can revolutionize uh, uh, the power sector that we can uh, utilization, we can have uh, the solar cell utilization even uh, in space and on the moon and to enable nuclear reactor maintenance and fuel uh, reprocessing and that, that that is we can do with the nano electronics i mean so we can do the things uh, which is uh, uh, i mean it's almost impossible by uh, i mean by, if we utilize the old concept of the technology so by the use of nanotechnology we can have super strong lightweight material to uh, to draw cost to leo geo and later the moon uh, by greater than 100 fold or 100 times uh, to enable huge but low cost light harvesting structure in space and to grow uh, efficiency of the uh, car, plane, etc. Similarly, we can have thermochemical uh, processes with a catalyst to generate hydrogen from the water that work efficiently at temperature lower than 900 degrees centigrade. So, uh, nanotech lighting uh, to uh, replace incandescent and fluorescent light. I mean, with the help of nanotechnology, we can have uh, nanotech lighting to, uh, that can be utilized to replace incandescent light and fluorescent, uh, fluorescent light. Uh, nanomaterials are nano coatings. Uh, we have as a result of the development of nanotechnology uh, that will enable vastly uh, that will enable vastly lower the cost of deep drilling to enable SDR hard uh, uh, SDR mean hard dry rock uh, geothermal heat mining I mean so we can uh, utilize even mining our geothermal process with the help of nanomaterials I mean with the help of that particular coating uh, a CO2 uh, mineralization schemes that can work on a vast uh, scale hopefully starting from uh, uh, basal and having no vast stream. So the future of nanotechnology, uh, here you can see that nanotechnology can do a lot uh, if we utilize in power sectors. And power sectors have done a lot and expected to do more in the near future by uh, by by having further development in the field. So uh, the question is the future of nanotechnology. What is the future of nanotechnology? You know that throughout the history. Uh, we have medicine, we have the development, but along with those development, we have, uh, I mean, uh, along with those development, we have some pros and cons of those development. For example, 
Uh, we have DDT uh, that has been utilized for cure malaria. Uh, malaria has been cured with the DDT, but it proves to be tox uh, toxic to animals. I mean, it has pros and cons. It has the benefit, but along with that benefit, it has some drawbacks or have some disadvantages or some harmful effect to the living organism. I mean, DDT on one side, when it's been discovered, been utilized for curing malaria, but at the same time, it's been proven to be toxic for the animal. Similarly, we have a pesticide that improve uh, crops yields. I mean, crops yields has been improved by the development of different kind of pesticide. But along with that, it's just, it has been found that most of these pesticides, it ha it ha it, ha it is uh, marcinic uh, agents effect on the human body. Or we can say that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I mean, uh, a pesticide uh, that we're utilizing mostly for improving the product yield is human uh, carcinogens. Uh, similarly, we have uh, refrigerators, uh, I mean, refrigerants mad houses, uh, but that leads to ozone's hole. But now the question is, uh, we have nanotechnology, uh, but still the people, they are working that what though nanotechnology has uh, development nanotechnology has development that has done more are doing more for uh, the better future of the human beings or for the living beings but the question is uh, where it will lead uh, lead us to uh, i mean so what will be the i mean the major drawback or the major harm of that nanotechnology for the human being is like we have for of the previous development so uh, in short we say that uh, nanotechnology provides with the ideal opportunity to rewrite uh, uh, how emerging technologies handle the public uh, the public question of press. I mean, nanotechnology provides us with the ideal opportunity to rewrite how emerging technologies handle the public questions of press. I mean, it's, uh, what, are, what are the risks that related with the nanotechnology are still a question mark. I mean, we, we don't have the precaution I mean, it's, it's, it's been a developing stage, so we don't have the public laws or, uh, I mean, the recipes for handling those uh, risks. Uh, for example, uh, nanotechnology for the long haul, that is, uh, what will be the nanotechnology's impact on the world's environment? That is, uh, we know that there is plenty of kind of nanomaterials. Uh, those materials, they are very small. It can be utilized. We, we can't be util, uh, visualized by the naked eyes. I mean, they can easily travel even through our bodies. So uh, they're harmful if they're toxic, so it can produce, uh, I mean, a huge damage to our bodies, to our body cells. Uh, so uh, uh, these are some of the question marks that if we inhale, I mean, even through air, uh, through some of the drinking waters. So these nano, uh, nanomaterial, these, uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, the the nanomaterial of the size, I mean, we, which we can uh, utilize with the eyes, uh, I mean, that, uh, that included a nanostructure membrane. Uh, so those membrane and uh, we can other we can have other nanomaterials uh, whose patent transport can be uh, very very harmful to our bodies. Uh, so similarly, we say that if these materials included in our food our drinking waters are, are, are even the air, the, the environment uh, uh, where we take the oxygen for uh, for living. So uh, that they can be, I mean, that can produce the effect, uh, I mean, which can be beyond the human understanding. So on one side, we have the advantage of nanotechnology, and the other side, we have the potential harmful effect, the potential racks, uh, uh, but still the people, I mean, they're they saying that, uh, I mean, efforts, they are really much needed to, uh, to stop uh, some of those epic that the harmful epic of the nanotechnology so that's all for this lecture see you in the next lecture